Another beautiful Dunedin day, and as the sun rises in the east, the famous dawn chorus begins. Wherever people go, when they have to go, they have to go. The problem is, when they have to go, where does it all go? When Dunedin was first settled, it went mostly into the harbour. But as Dunedin grew, so too did the smell. So night carts were introduced to take away the waste each morning and dump it here, here, and over there somewhere. Ancient history? Perhaps. But night carts were still doing the rounds and dumping human waste on these sand hills up into the 1950s. But Dunedin settlers of the 19th century brought with them one of Victorian Britain's greatest discoveries, an understanding of how diseases spread and how to whisk away the risk through sewers. Some of Dunedin's Victorian sewers are still in operation and along with more modern sewers carry Dunedin wastewater to the city's lowest point, Musselboro. In 1908, a tunnel was bored through Lawyer's Head to dispose of the waste into the sea. So the wastewater was successfully piped and pumped out of sight and out of mind. Well, out of sight if you didn't look too closely. But in the latter half of the 20th century, the sight of inappropriate lumps of stuff lying on local beaches were not what local bathers and surfers wanted. And if the wind was blowing the wrong way, Dunedin's sewage was definitely not out of mind. Surf lifesavers learnt to swim with their mouths shut. So in 1982, a treatment plant was established at Tahuna to partially process the sewage before it was pumped out to sea. This was a big step forward and the situation was improved a bit. But the growth of Dunedin's industries meant that it was not only human waste that needed to be disposed of, Industrial waste from the wool scour, tanning works and the food processing factories also contributed to the wastewater problem. And while Dunedin's central areas were well served by sewers, the peninsula and beachside towns still pumped their sewage directly into Dunedin's beautiful harbour or out onto our not so pristine coastlines. People were becoming more aware of environmental issues and more protective of Dunedin's natural wonders. Many of Dunedin's smaller centres like Warrington utilise oxidation ponds for wastewater treatment, where the symbiotic relationship between algae and bacteria break down the waterborne waste. The treated wastewater is recycled into the surrounding sand dunes. This works well in small centres, with the resulting groundwater often being cleaner than the water running off surrounding farms. Some harbourside communities also had small treatment systems discharging directly into the harbour. However, these have been progressively incorporated into Dunedin's main sewerage network. And in the early 1990s, Dunedin initiated a progressive upgrade strategy for the wastewater system in the Greater Dunedin area, intended to process the city's wastewater to an appropriate environmental standard. In the Dunedin metropolitan area, the sheer volume of wastewater generated was simply too great to be processed in a few small settling ponds. So a more sophisticated answer was needed. The Green Island plant was upgraded to process the local Green Island sewage and industrial waste. And in Dunedin Central, a long outfall pipe was constructed, first through a tunnel and then laid on the seabed to carry the wastewater more than one kilometre out to sea. As soon as this was working, the old outfall through Lawyer's Head was closed. And for the first time in 100 years, Tomahawk Beach became swimmable. But the water flowing out through the pipe was still no cleaner than it had been before, just further out of sight. So the upgrade of the Tahuna plant continued and a substantially more effective wastewater plant was commissioned in January 2013. Essentially, the upgraded Tahuna plant uses microbiological action to clarify the wastewater, then disinfects it without the use of chemicals. 
The resulting water is then released through the extended outfall into the sea. The process works like this. At the Musselburgh pump station, the wastewater is coarsely screened to remove large items like rocks, nappies, lost hubcaps, cricket balls, before being pumped on to the Tahuna plant. Here, wastewater comes rushing in and is further screened to remove grit, panty liners, fat and grease. These are simply taken to the landfill. And no, a flushed wedding ring has never been found here by an upset husband or wife. Although precious toys and the odd set of false teeth have been found. Once the water has been fine screened, it flows into three huge tanks, the high rate activated sludge area. Here, air introduced into the wastewater provides aerobic conditions for the microbiological action to occur, breaking down the largely organic waste into sludge or biosolids, which is collected and pumped away for dewatering. Once most of the solids have been removed, the water flows by gravity to a pump station. From here, it is pumped into the biological trickling filters. These two huge tanks contain six million polypropylene forms, which are shaped so that the maximum amount of surface area is exposed to the biological action. The partially treated water is trickled onto the top of these filters and the bacteria go to work producing an organic slime similar to that on a shaded footpath. The slime builds up and eventually falls off the shapes or is flushed away once a day. The resulting biosolids are pumped back into the high rate activated sludge area and further treated. All this occurs without the use of chemicals or similar artificial treatment. The air from these areas becomes smelly so it is ducted to four huge biofilters. The air is introduced below and rises through masses of wood bark. Further microbiological action occurs within the bark. The smell is removed, releasing only water vapour, carbon dioxide and a very faint musty smell. With most of the solids removed, the water from the trickling filters is now reasonably clear but still contains potentially harmful microorganisms. So it's pumped into the UV plant, where the water is zapped with ultraviolet rays. These UV rays kill harmful microorganisms. This is the climax of the operation. The whole process has been designed to make the wastewater as clear as possible so that it may be irradiated with the UV rays, resulting in water of an appropriate quality to release into our surrounding environment. Meanwhile, the biosolids collected from the high-rate activated sludge area and from the trickling filters is collected in two large tanks ready to be dewatered. The dewatering plant uses a series of processes to extract as much water as possible from the biosolids. Gravity belt thickness simply let the water drain out with the aid of polyelectrolytes and centrifuges like the spin cycle on your washing machine spin more water from the biosolids. The dewatered solids are then screw fed into a 60 ton storage tank. It is then simply burnt in the Tahuna plant's advanced incineration area, taken to the Green Island Wastewater Treatment Plant digesters or the Green Island landfill. As the biosolids break down in the digesters and the landfill, the resulting methane from the landfill and the Green Island digesters is piped back to the Green Island Wastewater Treatment Plant, where it fuels a gas generator power station. The electricity produced is used to power the Green Island Wastewater Treatment Plant. Throughout the entire system, very few chemicals are used. Electricity is generated to run the Green Island Wastewater Treatment Plant from the biosolids captured at both Green Island and Tahuna. And the result? Water stripped of most of the harmful microorganisms ready to be reintroduced into the natural water cycle. As a result of these upgrades, Dunedin's beaches and shorelines are now free of sewage-related solid wastes. And the water released into the sea contains minimal harmful microorganisms. So tomorrow morning, when you have to go, spare a thought for where it all goes. Because when you've been, you can be sure you've flushed with success. The Tahuna Wastewater Plant now processes Dunedin's wastewater to a quality where it can be harmlessly released into the sea. 
we can be confident that our city is safe from disease and our environment remains undamaged.